hope you're enjoying today's broadcast, everybody. And we'd like to turn any Star Wars fans' attention to a Star Wars podcast called Star Wars Escape Pod, with news, after shows, roundtables, commentaries, and discussion from across the galaxy taking place in Star Wars Escape Pod, found on all podcasting platforms across the internet. We'll see you there. The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson, friends. How do you feel about it? Isn't smoking enjoyment the main thing you want from your cigarette? Well, just remember this. Smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Now, freshness is especially important. And you'll be glad to know that every pack of Lucky Strike is extra tightly sealed to bring you Lucky's better taste in all its natural freshness. Light up a Lucky and see for yourself how much fresher, how much better it does taste. Lucky's just have to taste better. In the first place, they're made with fine tobacco. Fine, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Secondly, Luckies are made better. Made round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly. All this means better taste. Yes, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Luckies taste better. So, be happy. Go Lucky. Get better taste and get it fresh with Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Bay, Bob Crosby, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, for 20 years, I have been introducing the star of our show, and after all this time, you'd think I'd run out of nice things to say about him. Well, I have. So here he is, Jack Benny. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don... That wasn't a very nice introduction. Well, I'm sorry, Jack. After 20 years, I just couldn't think of anything new. Oh, you couldn't, eh? Well, Don, I'm sure that if I were introducing you, I wouldn't have that trouble. Oh, oh, yes, you would, Jack. You've been saying the same things about me for years. Now, I'll bet you can't say anything that I haven't heard before. Oh, yes, I can, Don. What? You're fired. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, we'll proceed... Oh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jack. You're not serious, are you? Well... You well... can't fire me. After all, I've got a wife and three chins to support. <laughs> Don, Don, stop worrying. You've been with me for 20 years, and I hope you're with me for another... Oh, hello, everybody. Well, hello, Dennis. Well, uh, hiya, kid. Hiya, Dennis. Oh, by the way, Dennis, you weren't at any of the rehearsals this week. Was anything wrong? Oh, no, Don. Mr. Benny gave me a few days off so I could go away for a little vacation. I sure enjoyed myself. I went fishing on Lake Mead. You know, I wish I could go away and do a little fishing. It's one of my favorite sports. What a thrill it is to hook a silvery rainbow trout, one of nature's loveliest creations. What a sight as it breaks the water in a shimmering shower of glistening drops and the sunlight reflecting on its iridescent beauty. Look how he describes the fish. Me, he can't say anything nice about. <laughs> how do you like that? What are you mad about? <laughs> nothing, nothing. Oh, uh, say, Dennis, how long were you at Lake Mead? Oh, we were there for a whole week, and I spent all my time out on the boat. A whole week on a boat? Avast there, you landlubbers! Larboard the starboard and drop the anchor! Look, Dennis. Shiver the timbers and man the pumps so we'll all drown like rats! <laughs> Dennis, that's enough. Ahoy, my hearties, batting down the hatches and pooping down the poop deck. <laughs> that's 
enough, Dennis. Do you hear? Mr. Christian, stow that talk, or I'll swing you from the highest yard arm in the British fleet. Oh, for <laughs> Don, see what you can do with them. Now, Dennis, Jack's right. Why don't Let you... the men mute me, hearty, and don't worry, the ship may be rocking and pitching, but I'll sail it through this hurricane, or... 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 Dennis, what's the matter? I'm seasick. <laughs> Good, good. Now, look, Popeye, it's time for your song. So let's have it. Aye, aye, sir. Because you're mine, the brightest star I see looks down my love. And envies me because you're mine, because you're mine, because you're mine. A breeze that hurries by becomes a melody and why? Because you're mine, because you're mine. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we're going to do our version of that exciting new picture, Wings of the Hawk, which was produced... Say, Jack. Huh? Oh, what is it, Bob? Well, before you go into that sketch, I I'd like to ask you a little favor. A favor? Well, it's, it's really not for me. It's for my brother, Bing. You see, he just built a brand new supermarket here in town. Bing built a supermarket? Mm-hmm. Grand openings tonight. And there's going to be lots of celebrities there. And Bing said that he'd appreciate it if you'd come and help out. Well, well, does he want me to play my violin? Mm, no. Oh, he just wants me to tell jokes. No. Huh? Well, then what does he want me to do? Buy something. <laughs> Well, he's got a fat chance. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe I will drop around. But, Bob, I can't understand. With all the deals that Bing has, why does he want to fool around with a supermarket? Well, Jack, this isn't just any old supermarket. It's a super supermarket. It's big, you mean? Big. Why, at one end, you can buy strawberries, and at the other end, they're out of season. <laughs> Gee, 
Well, you have to go through the frozen food department by dog sled. <laughs> no. And when you cross over into the meat department, you lose a day. <laughs> well, look at Bob. <laughs> <laughs> now you're exaggerating. But I'll talk to you about it later, Bob, because right now it's time for our play. Oh, the sketch, huh? Yes. Tonight we're going to do our version of Universal International's Technicolor production, Wings of the Hawk. Say, and I heard that picture's just chucked full of adventure and excitement. And how? You know, the other night I took Mary to see it, and she sat on the edge of the chair all through it. She had to. You only bought one ticket. <laughs> True, true. Now, Bob, Don, and Dennis, you all have important parts in this play. Bob, you have the role of a colonel in the Mexican army, a cruel, ruthless, greedy man who lets nothing stand in his way. And I'm going to take the part Van Heflin played, that of a rough, tough gold prospector, Irish Gallagher. You're Irish Gallagher? <laughs> That's right. Oy vey. <laughs> Never mind. Now, Dennis, in this sketch, you're going to play the part of an old, old prospector, see? Then you come in later as a Mexican bandit. Gee, two parts. It's hard to believe I can sing, too. Yeah. <laughs> now, where's Mel Blank? Here I am, Jack. Folks, it's Mel Blank. Give him a big hand. Jack, we're all going to be in the play. Why did you give just him applause? Don, I have to. It's in this contract. You mean you give him money and applause, too? No money, just applause. <laughs> Look, it's getting late. So, Don, set the scene, will okay. you? Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we present our version of Universal International's exciting adventure story, Wings of the Hawk. Our story takes place in Mexico years ago. It's a time of war and revolution, where the country is being torn by the bitter struggle of the insurrectos against the federal troops. My name is Irish Gallagher. My partner, Don Carlos Wilson, and I were prospecting for gold in the Mexican hills. Don Carlos Wilson was a hard worker. Day after day, he dug under that blistering sun, and I never left his side. I couldn't. He was the only shade for miles. <laughs> we worked on and on with only an occasional interruption. <laughs> Irish, it's the Federalists and the Insurrectos. Keep digging, Don Carlos. But they're shooting at each other. We're right in the middle. <laughs> oh, oh, what have got me in the arm? Keep digging. Oh, that one got me in the leg. Keep digging. Three days later, <laughs> Don Carlos was still standing, but there was very little shade. <laughs> Looks like we're about at the end of our rope. Yeah, this is awful. No money, no equipment, no place to sleep. Nothing to eat, nothing to drink. Now, let's see what we can do in this saloon. Hey, the place is quite crowded. Hey, barmaid! <laughs> barmaid! Si, sí, senor, what will you have? Give me three fingers. Three fingers of what? Just three fingers. I'm hungry. <laughs> if I don't get something to eat pretty soon, I... Hey, I'll... aren't you the one they call Irish Gallagher? That's right. And this is my partner, Don Carlos. He and I came down here looking for gold. Yeah, gold. 
Every time I think of it, I go crazy. Gold. Gold. I can see it now. There it is. There it is, and it's mine. It's mine. Gold. Gold. Put that down. That's the cuspidor. <laughs> You know, sister, he goes crazy every time he thinks of gold. Well, does not gold mean anything to you? Eh, I can take it or love it. I mean, leave it. <laughs> Come on, Don Carlos. Let's get out of here. Wait, wait, Irish weird luck. See that little fellow over there? That's Gold Bug Day. <laughs> yeah, he was Gold Bug Day. The fabulous old prospector who found gold every time he went out. Don Carlos introduced me to him. Gold Bug Day, want you to meet Irish Gallagher. Howdy, Bub. <laughs> Bug, I hear that you know all about the gold in these parts, and I thought maybe you'd come up into the mountains with us. Sorry, son, but I'm too old for that now. There was a time when I used to go up in them there hills, stay for months and months at a time, but then it would get me. I was only human, you know. I'd have to come back. Be back in town with a load of gold and a couple of nights, and I'd blow it all in. Women, eh? No, Kleenex. I've got hay fever. <laughs> oh. Well, look, Bug, if you won't go with us, maybe you can tell us where we can find gold. Why, sure. Here's a map of old Mexico. See? You can't go wrong. You take the main road through Tampico till you pass El Paso. After you pass El Paso, you go through El Thruo and turn left at El Lefto. What if we turn El Righto? That's El Wrongo. <laughs> Why don't you come and show us the way? Nope, I'm too old for prospecting now. Where well, we go alone, Irish. Tell me, are you sure there's gold there? Yes, sir, lots of it. Enough to make one of you rich for the rest of your life. Only one of us? Yep. I hated to do it. John Carlos was my best friend. I still felt I might need a guide, so I made one more attempt to get the old prospector to go with me. Are you sure you don't want to come along with me? Nope. Can't do it, but I'll see you later. You will? Yep, I come back on page 12 as a Mexican bandit. <laughs> Uh, wait a minute. Those four Mexicans who just came in, they look suspicious. Who are they? Oh, they're harmless. They're just wandering troubadours. Oh. Buenos dias, amigos. Hmm, we think. Come on, boys. Let's have a song. Tampico, Tampico, on the Gulf of Mexico. Tampico, Tampico, that's the place for you to go. Tampico, Tampico. In everyone's sister, and they please every missus and mister. My uncle, my aunt, and my sister. LSM, 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 There is nothing like puffin' or lucky. Be happy and go lucky strike. Strike. Lucky strike. After they sang a few more songs, I left and began my expedition. And I finally found the spot the old prospector marked on the map. I began digging, and sure enough, I struck it. A six-foot vein of pure, glittering gold. It was so beautiful, I couldn't understand why people get mad when you call them yellow. <laughs> I started to dig out some of this fabulous treasure. A troop of horsemen swooped down on us. I realized it was foolish to resist, so I waved a truce flag. As several of them approached me, I recognized their leader as the cruel Colonel Ruiz. 
And I knew I'd have to play it cagey. Senor Hombre, I hear that here you have discovered gold here. I think, Senor Hombre. <laughs> yes, I would have to play it cagey because he was playing it lousy. <laughs> What did you say, Colonel Ruiz? <laughs> I hear that here you have discovered gold. Gold? There's no gold around here. Senor Irish, we are not ones to fool around, and we happen to know that you have found gold here. All right, so what about it? <laughs> My general has a proposition to make to you. Well, let's have it. Si, los matamos, tendríamos que cargar con todo por la tanto coja, usted el oro y matarlos después. <laughs> What did he say? He gave you Notre Dame and six points. <laughs> hmm. Yes, I shot him. I may be Irish, but I need better odds than that. <laughs> but the Federalists had us outnumbered. They killed my workers and took the mine. I had to flee into the hills for my life. After wandering for days, I stumbled exhausted into a camp of insurrectos. At first, they were suspicious. But finally, one of them came over and shook my hand. You want to shake hands? Si. Sí. <laughs> then I consider you my friend? Si. Sí. You will always help me? Si. Sí. Then, to my surprise, he walked away. <coughs> the insurrectos gave me food and drink, and I was about to be on my way when suddenly there was a stir of excitement. What is it? What's happened? It is our leader, Raquel. She has been wounded. Your leader is a girl? Si, sí, senor. I am Raquel, their leader. Well, I'm awfully pleased. Wait a minute. Weren't you the barmaid? Si, sí, senor. But on this show, everyone has to play two parts. <laughs> well, uh, Raquel. Raquel, there's blood on your shoulder. I know. I've been shot. The bullet is still in there. Senor, there are no doctors here and no time to lose. Can you remove the bullet? I'll try. Now, Raquel, there's no anesthetic, and this knife is going to hurt. I know. You'll have to be brave. I will try. Don't lose your nerve. I won't. Okay, here we go. There. It's out. Pick him up, he fainted. When I came to, Raquel and I were alone, and she was stroking my hair. She was gorgeous, with smooth olive skin, luscious lips, and a figure like Marilyn Monroe. As I continued looking into her adoring eyes, a thought came to me. <laughs> What was so bad about Notre Dame and Six Points? <laughs> Raquel spoke to me. She wanted me to join her band of soldiers. But I was more interested in getting my gold. I turned to go. Someone pulled at my sleeve. Oh, Senor Irish. Senor Irish. What is it? Uh, before you leave, I would like you to meet my little six-year-old son, Tomas. Oh, hello, Tomas. Uh, Tomas, he is learning to be a magician. He does a wonderful act on the stage with his sister. Really? So you're a magician, eh, Tomas? Say. Si. <laughs> Do you have an act? Say. Si. With your sister? Say. Si. What is your sister's name? So. <laughs> What do you do in your act? Saw. What do you saw? So. Sue? See. Now, wait a minute. Somebody put you up to this. Who was it? Me. You? Si. Who are you? Si. Si? Si. Now, shut that up! two 
of them. They were driving me so nuts I couldn't size straight. See? <laughs> suddenly out of nowhere, the Federals attacked. <laughs> one by one, they cut us down. And then Raquel was hit. We fought desperately, but Raquel and I were captured and thrown in jail. That night, I couldn't sleep a wink. The cell was cold, wet, and filthy. I didn't mind that so much. But all night long, the wind kept whistling through Raquel's shoulder. <laughs> the next morning, as the sun rose, they blindfolded us and marched us out to the courtyard. Hold! Ready! Aim! Wait. You can't shoot me down like a dog. Give me a break. Give me a chance. I tell you what I will do, senor. I give you a fighting chance. You take off your blindfold. Now, here is a weapon for you and a weapon for me. What? You count to ten and may the best hombre win. Well, all right. I'll count to ten. One, two, three. Ooh, not yet. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, I think you're cheating. Nine. You missed me. That's better. Ten. Ooh. Irish, Irish, why didn't you shoot back? I couldn't. He gave me a knife. As I lay there dying, I reached for a piece of Kleenex. On top of everything else, I caught hay fever. Ladies and gentlemen, here's an important announcement. Carelessness is the greatest single cause of forest fires. Fires that every year destroy enough timber to build 86,000 homes. Most of these fires started because someone was careless with a lighted match, a campfire, a burning cigarette. Be on guard constantly against fire. Don't give fire a place to start. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first, let's meet America's prettiest professional golfer. Here she is, Miss Alice Bauer. You know something? I like to play golf. I've played golf for so many years. I played amateur golf at first, and now I'm playing professional golf. And I do like professional golf much better. It, uh, I don't know, it has more competition in it, and you really have to play a much better game of golf. I guess that's all a matter of taste, though. And after a hard day out on the golf course and really hard competition, I like to come in and sit down and relax and light up a Lucky. I guess that's a matter of taste, too. But to me, Luckies taste better. Thanks, Alice Bauer. Friends, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And the fact of the matter is, Luckies taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. First, because Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And second, because Luckies are made to taste better. So be happy, go Lucky. Ask for a carton of Lucky Strike. Ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday night over the entire CBS network, I will be doing my third television show of the season. And my guest star will be Humphrey Bogart. I hope you'll all be watching. The show was written by Sam Perrin, Milt Joseph Berg, George Walter, John Packerberry, Hal Goldman, and Al Gordon, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. Be sure to hear The American Way with Horace Height for Lucky Strike every Thursday over this same station. Consult your newspaper for the time. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is the CBS Radio Network. And KNX Los Angeles.